welcome oh my god i feel like i have to take a deep breath before i start episodes because i like set everything up and then i sit down and i'm like (gasps) if you needed a deep breath that one was for you so Welcome to a little mini episode of Human to Human. My name is Jess, and today I'm going to tell you how I get a job um, through my own volition. I weirdly have a history. I'm not weirdly. It's a track record. It's not a type. It's a pattern. Oh my God. I was hanging out with friends recently, and one of them said like, it's not a type. It's a pattern. Um, And I love that so much because a lot of times we're like oh my god no my type is just like white boys but it's like "Mm, is it that or is it a pattern I feel like white boys is a bad example but anyway so I have a pattern of getting jobs not through something like LinkedIn or Indeed or ZipRecruiter or any of those platforms I get a little funky with it I get a little creative with it and so I thought I would share my tactics on how I have always seem to have gotten jobs. I've worked a ton of different jobs in quite a few different industries. I've worked a pharmacy job for a long time. I worked for YouTubers as an executive assistant and helping with social media. I've worked at a physiotherapy clinic. Um, I have just gotten two new jobs. I'm working at a yoga studio at the front desk. And then I also am starting to work at a therapy clinic. And so you might be like, how are you getting these weird random jobs? And so I've explained it to a few different people in in my close inner circle. And so I was like, you know what? I should just make an episode to give you the rundown. So my thought process behind job searching is, okay, where do I want to work? What's the environment I want to work in? And like, what is that industry? So right now, my desire is to learn more about what it's like to be a therapist and see the behind the scenes of what goes into running a private practice because that's something that is on one of my potential could be jobs list. I've I've I graduated a psychology degree. So I'm like, I could become a therapist. I'm not quite ready to do more school. I want to see what it's like to be a therapist and run a clinic. Okay, great. One avenue that I'm exploring. I know I want to be in the wellness and I know I want to be in the mental health industry. Perfect. The other job that I just got is at a yoga studio and I chose to try and reach out to a yoga studio because another potential job dream of mine is being a yoga teacher. So to do both of those things, a therapist or a yoga teacher, you need a lot of training and you need to a lot you need to invest a lot of money into the training. And I don't feel ready to go back to school. I don't feel ready to invest thousands of dollars into a yoga teacher training. So I'm like, what's the best way to see if this is actually something I might want to do? I email them and try and get a job in that work environment using my skill set. And then the benefit is that I also get to see what it's like to be in this work environment. So I actually got this like inspiration from Rachel Hollis. She said this in a, in a, in a YouTube short that I saw and I actually can't find the full episode of it, but she gave this really great advice, um, which is a great way to also make more money is to think about all the skills that you have. Think about also if you could like enhance them or not, because then you could get paid more if you like took a certain class or something, whatever. But I took this as think about my skills and what I would have to offer someone in a therapy clinic who works as a therapist or someone who works at a yoga studio. So the more basic route is I have experience doing office administration. I have experience as a receptionist. So for the yoga studio, I just emailed them. Hi, um, I took a class recently at your studio. I loved it so much. I really like the environment and the community, a part, like a part of your studio. And I was wondering if you're hiring anyone at the front desk. Um, these are my qualifications. I have experience as a receptionist and with administrative support. Um, and I would love to set up a meeting if you're open to it. Boom, bada bing, bada boom. They needed more support at their front desk. They emailed me back. They set up a phone interview with me. We had an interview. She was like, great. I like your vibe. Let's bring you in for some training. It's that simple sometimes. It's really uncomfortable, to be honest, to write that whole email and put yourself out there. But a lot of places and a lot of business owners 
probably need support, but it's a whole thing to put out a job posting, to go through a million resumes, to try and get their job listing up on Indeed or LinkedIn. It's a whole thing. And then they're inviting in a shit ton of people to apply for this job. And that's a whole other hours of work job in itself. So these people who are running these companies, like they're already busy as fuck. And so if they were to put out a whole job posting, well, that's going to take up so much more of their time. Who has time for that? So a lot of companies, I think, just get by. They're just like, okay, whatever, we'll just figure it out. And they don't really take that leap to try and invite in more people. So who wouldn't want to receive an email of someone taking initiative and saying, hi, I would like to work at your establishment. And you're doing it even though you never saw a job posting, you never, you have actually no idea if they're looking for more support, but it's worth trying. The worst thing that can happen is they literally never respond. And a lot of the people I email have never responded. But I got a job working for some YouTubers who actually lived close to my house um, in Toronto. And I did it by just emailing and saying, hey, my name is Jess. If you're looking for any support as an assistant, here are my qualifications. And you attach your resume. I have attached my resume below. I would love to chat with you further. Blah, 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 blah. And then boom, I worked for them for a year and learned so much about what it was like to be a YouTuber, to be a content creator, to help them on the admin side of things, to collaborate with brands. I would have never gotten that insight unless I reached out and was like, hey, I'd like to work for you and also learn from you. And that's something that people often ask, ask in interviews as well is, what are you hoping to get from this experience? What could this exchange benefit for you? And what I said for the therapy clinic is I said, like, I want to see what it's like to be a therapist and to run a private practice. And I want to be a business owner one day. And he asked me if I want to own my own private practice one day. And I said, I don't know. I don't know if I actually want to be a therapist. I know that I want to work in the mental health industry. I know that I want to be a part of the wellness community. And I have a lot of skills that could benefit the company that actually have nothing to do with actually being a therapist. So I'd like to offer my services. And the way I did that was I thought to myself, okay, well, what do I know how to do really well? What have I done for years? Uh, You're listening to it. My podcast okay, great. If someone wants to start a podcast, a million, everybody wants to start a podcast. It crosses everybody's mind at least once. So I was like, great. I could offer my services to create a podcast for you and help you get it going. I also have social media experience. I also know how to use the platform that you use to book in your clients and your appointments. So if you needed admin support, boom, bada, bing, bada, boom. And I got a job. So It's that simple. And to give you a little bit more detail on how the therapy clinic job worked out was I found, I searched up on Instagram, Toronto therapists, Ontario therapists, therapists, and just found a bunch of different people running clinics in my area. And then I did a little bit more research and was like, ooh, okay, so this person has a great online presence and they have some YouTube videos. Maybe they would love a podcast. And so then I mentioned that and was like, I love your mission. And I read on their website what their mission was and I reiterated their mission back to them. And then I said, you know, a podcast could really benefit your company and help reach more potential clients and I could help you with that. And then I just told them what else I have experience with. I attached my resume, blah, blah. I feel like I've repeated the same thing over and over. But the biggest lesson or the biggest takeaway that you can get from this is one, you can create your own future. You can create your own reality. You can create your own job. You don't need to just doom scroll on freaking LinkedIn. God, does it give me anxiety? Because also, I don't want a typical office job. If you want your nine to five regular job, maybe you don't go this route. But for me, I should have prefaced that at the beginning. I want a different kind of job and I got to look for it in a different kind of way. The second thing I really hope you take away from this is in the email, lead with compliments, lead with the thing that you like about them as a person or a business owner or their company, because then they're going to be like, oh, okay, great. This person actually knows what we're doing, um, cares about what we're doing. And then I detailed how I could help them. So it's specific on how I could, you know, collaborate with them and then told them a little bit more about my skill set and attached my resume and that's it. And the thing I actually had as a response for the therapy clinic was, 
wow, thank you for not sending a generic email. This really shows me that you took the time to get to know my company. You're putting forth this incredible part of yourself. You're putting forth your your best foot of (laughs) yourself. You know what I mean? And offering your skill set and showing that you took the time to write this email, even though you may not get the job, you may not get a response. And honestly, I spent three days maybe when I had spare time searching up therapy clinics, searching up yoga studios, creating, I had a template for this email, but then I customized it for the person I was sending it to. And then suddenly I had multiple job opportunities come into my email on the exact same day which was insane. And if you're like, oh my God, Jess, I don't have a skill set in the job that I want to step into. That's okay. You have some sort of skill. Trust me. Are you an organized person? Are you a leader? Are you someone who loves to collaborate with others? Are you someone who has an interesting skill set? Like I know how to use an editing software. That's a skill set. I know how to set up a podcast to record. That's a skill. And so you can find skills. And also I got an assistant job for the YouTubers that I worked for. I got that job with no assistant experience at all. It was just like, I'm a creative. I do photography for fun at the time and I would love to learn from you. And so don't get bogged down because you don't have experience yet in the place you want to grow your career in because you got to start somewhere. The best place to start emailing, just emailing it won't hurt anybody. It really will only benefit you in the long run. And it could land you your dream freaking job. It could kickstart your whole career. And it's really not a typical way to go about it. But it's something that actually could really catch a lot of people's attention. And it has in my experience. So I really hope this was helpful for you. If it was, please leave a review. That would mean so freaking much to me. On Apple Podcasts, you can scroll to the very bottom of Human to Human and leave a written review. You can also leave a five-star review on Spotify or whatever you listen to your podcasts. Follow me on Instagram at Human to Human Pod. I am the most active on there. And submit a TMI story via DM or email or on my website, www.humantohumanpod.com. So I I can include your funny weird story in a future episode and also if you're someone who's always wanted to start a podcast i have my amazon storefront linked below with all the equipment i use to do what i'm doing right now podcasting anyway love you talk to you soon good luck go get your best job go get your future job go start your career you got it worst thing that happens is also you get a job and then you don't like it and then you quit it worst thing that happens you don't get a job at all you're fine it's fine just force yourself to do it okay bye